in case you didn't know, <laughs> betrayal is a bummer. And I wonder how many of you have experienced it. How many people in their life have experienced it? I hope the numbers are low because the havoc that it can wreak on the individual that has experienced it and the family and communities often changes everyone for the worse. So let's talk about that. Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Molsky. This is my YouTube channel. If you like it, you can subscribe, but you don't have to. It really doesn't matter that much. I have been betrayed, so I've been thinking about it and wanted to share what I came up with with you. Here's what I got. When you have been betrayed, the betrayer has put the ball in your court and it's probably an unwanted ball, but there it is anyway. Yes, I know, you could play the victim card. After all, it was you who was deceived, you who was lied to, you who feels the pain. You now have to make a choice, often a choice you don't want to have to make, which is funny to me considering how many people among us have an opinion about how everyone else should live. But when it comes down to us, we're a little more finicky. The decision is less trivial, much tougher, less obvious, perhaps. Sometimes, sometimes not. So you can choose to play the victim. It's your life. But please consider this. The only people whom society tends to give a free pass to in terms of expectations are victims. And if you choose to call yourself a victim, you may inadvertently give yourself a free pass and expect absolutely nothing of yourself or nothing good. That mindset, in my opinion, has far more negative reverberations than a betrayal will. But it's still a popular choice to play the victim card. We all see how many people compete in the victim Olympics. It's beginning to be the only sport that westernized societies consistently win at. But I think the fundamental question is this, how do you want to live and feel? Will you choose to sit in gloom and angst, writhing in self-pity and blame? After all, it was them, again, who was selfish, them who chose the wrong choice, them who was the aggressor, them who hurt you. Got it, got it. So let's just, let's just pause here. If you want to watch a video or videos that remind you that being betrayed sucks, which it does, or that you should take a nap because of it, punch a pillow, disengage, kick a puppy, take revenge, act harder so no one can hurt you, think that all women will hurt you, that all men are pigs, then you have to stop this video. Thanks for tuning in. I'm not the YouTuber for you. Be well. There's a lot of content out there that's going to just remind you that you can grovel in your self-pity. But instead, for those of you who are sticking around, I would like to say to you, what are you going to do with this petulant opportunity? Opportunity, Jennifer. Only a woman would call betrayal an opportunity. But really, it is because let's look at the definition. Let's look at terms. Let's come to terms. Opportunity is a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. It does not say a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something you're excited about, right? I mean, that's the truth. It says a set of circumstances that makes it possible to do something. Maybe something you hadn't considered, something you didn't want to do, that's okay. Let's say that you find your wife's secret alcohol collection. You're cleaning and you find a bag of empty Jack Daniels bottles. She's been lying to you, getting wasted right under your nose. And you always suspected something wrong, but you trusted her. Why wouldn't you? She's amazing. But alas, she has given you, without your request, the gift of opportunity, what to do. Or maybe your significant other has been cheating with your sister, with all your sisters. Or maybe your child's been doing heroin while living in your basement. Or maybe someone that you love has spent all of your savings. There are, I promise you, a million ways a person can get f***ed in life. It is not a competition and you shouldn't ever compare your level of betrayal to anyone else's. That's a whole utterly different unhealthy condition, okay? But, but it's still a choice, you can do that if you want. So how can you use this interloping situation and betrayal to, to improve yourself? Should you even, is it possible? As I said before, you can use this pain as an opportunity to be a real douche. A lot of people do that, tit for tat, eye for an eye. But remember, when you are in pain, you are out of your mind. It's as if you have lost connection to you. It's the Buddha doll. There's a Buddha doll and he has all the chakras in line. He is level. So when, when you put the Buddha doll down, he sits there like a Buddha does. But if you put all the weight in the head, what happens to Buddha doll? He falls over. And when you've been betrayed, oftentimes you take all the energy from all the different areas that you should be or could be putting energy into and put it in your head. Now you're in your head. You think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it. Not healthy. Being 
betrayed can put you in purgatory, no man's land, a fork in the road, and you have a broken compass. Or rather, as I just suggested, your mind is altered, like the Buddha doll suggests. Your energy is concentrated in one place, your mind, and there's no room for it to escape. So now you're out of your head and totally out of you. So I'm going to read an excerpt from an article, relationalrecovery.com. It's about betrayal. Okay. Okay. You've just learned that you're betrayed. As the information slams into you, your body gets hot and adrenaline fills you like a million lightning bugs firing at once. Your hands shake, your knees cave, your heart starts to race. Your mind is like a skipping record, racing and jumping. The thoughts coming too fast to even think them, flying by in a kaleidoscope of remembered conversations and events, colors, and sound, all mixed together in a shower of lies. And now your body gets cold and the shaking is in your limbs. Your heart rate slows as if you've been betrayed, you know, this a deep brick like dread fills your stomach and chest. And then sometimes you cry. Sounds fun, right? But there you are anyway, betrayed. Now, this is just something that comes to my mind, my curious mind, the mind that I have that stays with me in, in light and darkness and appreciates all life stories, no matter how shitty a character is within that story. What happened to this person, the betrayer, that makes them comfortable enough to pass the buck on to you, the betrayed? It's hard for me to comfortably point fingers directly at them. And while that sounds like I'm allowing the betrayer off the hook, when I'm all about self-responsibility, that's not the case. But I have found that if I consider deeply, so I have wiggle room to question why and how this person's mind and soul has been hijacked, it gives me wiggle room to not feel such hate. You know, I don't get so cemented in hate or anger or whatever. And I just like to wonder about things. So this type of consideration may at least soften your judgments and, and allow some grace for their misconduct, not forgiveness. Okay. But like I said, for me, it keeps me a little bit, it keeps my integrity more stably intact because it softens my judgments and my actions may I soften then. So like I said in my high maintenance video, which I happen to like very much, the devil will play tricks on you your whole life. Okay. He'll play with you, fuck with you, try to try to get you in old ways. He'll be cunning and crafty, or he'll be openly lazy and obvious, but he wants you. And if you're an atheist, this may sound pukey and that's fine. If you want, you can jump over to my, my, probably my favorite video I've ever done. Are you possessed by a demon? And I'll spell out more clearly what I mean when I say demon, but if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Demon is a wrong. Anything that interrupts purity or attempts to interrupt purity. But like in my Jesse Lee Peterson interview that I did with him, he said, don't play God and judge, except, ugh, I know it's hard, except and recognize and figure out what you're going to do next. You do you, 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 not, are you going to key their car? No. What are you going to do? I had a therapist once who would tell me not to claim emotions were me. So instead of saying I have social anxiety, it would be better. It would behoove me more if I said, oh, there I am feeling socially anxious because I'm not a feeling. You're not a feeling. I'm one of trillions of experiencers. I could witness and recognize it without allowing them the emotion to define me. It's the same with pain or betrayal. I can live life thinking I'm a victim or I can recognize the betrayal, except that the disease is gone. Disease being the act that constituted the definition of betrayal. And maybe it's not gone, but it's come to light. It's, it's seen now and ready to be dealt with. But the symptoms because of being put into the light have now just begun. So now is when, when I have my choices. Okay. So what are you going to do with the opportunity of this betrayal? My advice is seek counsel. So you need to arrange your mind back in a way that works best for your integrity and soul, not the devil's. Oh, what do I mean? Deathbed. Deathbed meditations. Always be making decisions that will make you proud of yourself in the last seconds of the inevitable death that we all face. Do not make decisions that check off items on the devil's to-do list by allowing him to dictate you. Here's an example of what I mean by that. Okay. So you get someone to fuck with Sam, right? So you've commanded someone and now they're fucking with Sam. And then you take something from Sam and now Sam is enraged. Get Sam to be angry and live out the rest of his life acting with rage. Steal Sam's soul. Win this month's commission bonus. Make Lucifer proud. Then you get to advance to round two, which actually I think would probably be easier. The better you get at being demonic, the easier it is 
to win over other people. Okay, so now you can fuck with Sam's daughter. By taking from Sam, by taking Sam from the light, we can more easily destroy his family, his daughter. So now we make Sam's daughter enraged. Now we can get Sam's daughter to be angry and live out her life like that. And now we steal Sam's daughter's soul when she's young. And now we can direct Sam's daughter's soul to take her anger out on the world as soon as possible for longer. And then we get a pat on the head from Lucifer because the worldwide plan for domination and takeover is working beautifully. Yeah, go to therapy and figure out what you're going to do next. Don't let that prick win. Will you stay with the betrayer? Will you forgive the betrayer? Will you allow it to happen again and then blame them? Will you let the betrayer heroin kid back in the house? Is it worth it? What makes it worth it? What's your timeline? Timelines are very important and no one seems to really use them. I mention timelines because it seems like many people waste their life without one. So here's, here's a, a low hanging fruit example. My boyfriend punched me. I didn't like it, but he said he wouldn't do it again. And I don't want to be hit again, but I don't know if I should give up on him just yet. So I'll stay and give him an opportunity to do the right thing. Okay. After all, I have no history to see if he's a man of his word. Okay. Shit. He hit me again. This time a little harder, but this time he apologized more. Oh good. I'll give him another chance. I just love him so much. Okay. He did it again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And now we're in 10 years and I keep saying, I don't want to be hit again, but I just don't know if I should leave him just yet. Remember with every opportunity you give someone to do the right thing, or the wrong thing, you are removing an opportunity for yourself to move on, to do the right thing for yourself. Maybe, maybe, because sometimes, as we all know, sometimes if you give someone that you love another opportunity to be better, they'll take it. Sometimes not. Je ne sais pas. And this is what I've, this is what I always tell people. You have to have boundaries. I did a whole video about boundaries. People fucking hated it. What are you willing to accept? What are your deal breakers and when? Don't be a frog who is slowly cooked until you're dead. Be an astute and self-respecting individual who knows what you are willing to tolerate and for how long. What is the price of daily admission to be with you? Are you a cheap ticket when you're in love or are you high maintenance? Meaning you have your shit figured out and you don't want any betrayals or, or lies in your life. There is no right answer. I don't have the trademark on truth like many people claim to have. I'm just thinking out loud for you. Every one of you is unique and every one of you is free to make decisions for yourself. I can't control you, nor do I want to, but I want you honestly to be filled with light and love and happiness and integrity and cheer and goodwill and to live a life of self-responsibility because no one has your back like you do. So you have to act like it. So what do you think? What do you think about betrayal? Have you been betrayed? I'm sure you have. If you're watching this video, I'm sure you have. You could be going through it right now. What are you going to do? My best piece of advice is no matter what you do, whether you choose to stay or choose to go or choose to let your kid move back in or not, or whatever it is, you have to recognize that that's your decision. What uh, George Bush botched it, but it's like, screw me once, shame on thee, screw me, screw me twice, shame on me. That's your opportunity, okay, to make the best decision for yourself and take as much responsibility as you can or not. <laughs> okay, everyone, be well. I'll see you on Friday night. Peace.